A lot of people seem to think that marketing is just all about getting an ad into Facebook or Google and just getting sales flowing into your website from that point on forever. But it comes down to so much more detail than that. A lot of the time it's just about understanding how your audience thinks so that you can take advantage of getting them to see your point of view. And where every detail matters, the colors that you pick for your brand image or your product image are absolutely vital. They will have a huge impact on the outcome of your sales push. So today I'm going to talk all about color psychology. I'm going to tell you what it is, what factors you need to consider when you're picking colors and how to pick those colors. My name is Trent Canelli. I'm a marketing strategist and on this channel I talk about all the things that you can do to improve your business through marketing, sales, and analytics. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, comment and let me know what your color choices are, what you're thinking about, and I would love to know the culture that you're targeting. You're going to understand that a little bit better in just a minute and let's get started. All right, so what is color psychology? Color psychology, broadly speaking, is the study of how color affects people and causes emotional reactions in them. From a marketing perspective, we are using color to create those emotional reactions so that we can then use that mindset shift to sell to people more effectively. So a good example of this would be a dark yellow. Dark yellow indicates fear, especially if you use it in the context of someone's face who looks a little bit afraid. This is gonna amplify that feeling of fear, which is going to drive some amount of fear in the viewer or the reader or the user or whatever audience group you're pitching to, then you can use that pitch and the feeling of fear that they have to show them that they don't need to be afraid because your product or your service is here as the hero to save the day. All right, now let's talk about some factors in color psychology. So there are a lot of different factors. We're gonna name some of the most important ones here. The first one I wanna talk about is how this color interacts with other elements of its environment. So not only the other colors, but the other objects on the page as well. So do these objects and these colors seem to clash together depending on how they're built? So if you have extra shadows on the page, does that seem to make the super bright colors look better or worse, etc.? But it's also about the color combinations and how they interact with each other. Now we're going to get into color combinations a little bit later, but just understand for now that we want to find color combinations that interact and work really well together. So yellow and purple might feel fresh and new. That might be a nice combination, but if you suddenly add a third color in there and you put pink in, it might feel really overwhelming and it might feel like the best way I can describe it is like a cavity. It's just too sweet. It's too much. Okay. So color combinations are very important because the way these colors play together and the way they play together with the objects on the page are going to cause that reaction. And they're going to enhance that reaction. Brightness level is also very important. This is very simple. Brightness causes a positive reaction. Darkness causes a negative reaction. Think of night and day. We think of night as the darker, sadder, more somber time. We think of daytime as the brighter, the happier time for the most part, okay? Bright blue also feels happier and dark orange feels more somber, right? So that's how those two things play together. Brightness causes positivity or negativity. Warmth and coolness of the color is also really important. So a warmer color is one that's going to be a little bit more yellow. A cooler color is going to be something that's a little bit more blue. So things always work on that range, more yellow or more blue. The more yellow colors might feel a little bit older or they might feel a little more foreign or something like that. They might feel a little hotter as the word goes. Cooler colors being a little bit more blue might feel a little bit more relaxed. They also might feel colder. It really just depends on the situation. Next thing to consider is culture. This is tricky, but this is really, really important. Culture absolutely affects what colors cause what reactions in what people. A good example of this is that in the 1950s, Pepsi changed their vending machine colors from that dark royal blue that they normally have to a light blue. This seems like a subtle change to us, but in those Southeast Asian countries, light blue is associated with death and mourning. And so by changing the vending machine colors, they basically called themselves the death and mourning option, okay? So nobody wanted to go get death and mourning Pepsi, and so their sales plummeted. So it is really, really important to consider the effect that culture has on your color choices. Otherwise, you are probably leaving sales directly on the table as a result of your colors. And by the way, just a side note, this is the reason that I'm not gonna tell you yellow means cowardice and fear or whatever down below because it's not doing you any good, okay? I'm gonna provide you instead a link in the description to uh, the guide that kind of talks about the different regions and the colors and how they're associated. That's gonna be more interesting for you because that's gonna have more of an impact versus me just saying, 
yellow is fear because that's US based. That doesn't mean anything outside of the US. And then the last big thing to consider, this is really important, is past experience, sometimes called memory color. So our memories shape how we react to things. The simplest example is something that I just learned about, is that most people associate yellow with bananas, but there are some people that associate red with bananas. It's because those people grew up around what are called red DACA bananas, and those bananas are red. And so if you tell those people, what do you associate with bananas? They're gonna tell you red, okay? And so your memory, your past experience, also comes into account here. So it is very important that you not only understand that culture and all of those other things, but that you understand more or less where the mindset of your target audience is so that you can understand if there's some sort of color variance from what you would have expected, right? So for instance, if you're targeting people in America, but you're specifically targeting the Asian community to sell to them in America, maybe you need to consider what their cultural expectation is, not only from a cultural perspective, but from a memory color perspective and how they've mixed those two, their experiences in maybe their home country of China or Vietnam or something like that, and their local experiences in the United States. Okay, so let's talk about how to pick our colors. So the first question we need to ask when we're figuring out how to pick our colors is the first question we ask in just about any situation, which is who is your target? So check out this video to identify your ideal customer avatar, because if you know who this is, who your ideal customer is, who your target is, it helps you with so much. It becomes a lot easier to identify how to respond to positive and negative input. It becomes a lot easier to identify the right color palette for your ideal customer, if they like primary colors, if they like pastels or whatever. It becomes a lot easier to figure that out if you know who they are. It also it helps, again, to figure out where they are if they are in a place that is culturally more associative with certain colors than other colors, like black is death or green is death or something else. If you understand who they are, then you can figure out where they are. It makes everything a lot easier. How many do you want? So I typically suggest three colors maximum, though if you have to, four is probably okay. I definitely would not go more than that because you're just putting a rainbow in and it's hard to look at. So I really don't think that that's a good idea in most situations. Also consider that we're picking here our main colors. There'll be shades of lighter and darker for each of these colors. So you'll have some variety in there. It's not like you're gonna be only stuck to three colors and that's boring. You'll have a lot of variety that you can do within it. We're just gonna be focusing on these two or three or four main colors, okay? Next, what emotion do you want people to have? So the emotion that you want people to have will most likely dictate the color scheme. So we need to consider this before we actually pick our colors. This goes back to copywriting a little bit because we're working on pain versus pleasure. You can check out this video for pain versus pleasure and other copywriting ideas, but just a general overview of pain versus pleasure. When you're writing copy for sales, you're driving people away from pain or towards pleasure. That's the whole point. You want them to either feel like they're no longer gonna have a pain that they have to deal with, or they're gonna feel more pleasure in their life as a result of what you're offering, okay? So, if something needs to be a little bit more pain or fear-based, darker colors might be the way to go. A lot of people use flat black on this. I'm not really a huge fan of that. I think that's a little too much, but I see it used quite a bit. If you're all about comfort or pleasure, brighter could be a lot better. Whites and yellows could be a better way to go, et cetera. All right, let's talk about color combinations. So look, there are an infinite number of color combinations, but honestly, if you just start slapping them together, you're gonna get some truly ugly outcomes. It's best to think about this from a color wheel, okay? So all of the colors are gonna be as a gradient on a wheel. They go from red all the way down to green, through yellow and blue, et cetera. It's best to use this because you can visualize things a little bit more easily and understand how things play together, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this site, palaton.com, right here, to help you understand a little bit more about different color combinations and how they can work together. This is a very easy to use site, it's totally free. All you have to do is just select the number and style of colors that you want to use. Then you can select in the center how light or dark you want your palette to be. You can see that dark to light range there. Then you use that outer wheel to spin around looking at different combinations. And then there's that mock-up on the right that kind of shows how these colors play together in general, okay? So it's not gonna show you a specific image or anything like that, but it's gonna give you a very good idea of how they feel together. The first color combo is monochromatic. So this is one color, but it's also a range of shades inside of that color. So you can see already that it goes from lighter to darker. So the colors are slightly different. It is one overall overarching primary color, 
but there's just a couple of different shades in there so that it breaks things up a little bit. You can use this. I don't usually suggest using only one color. Complementary colors is the next step up. So that is two colors. They sit across from each other on the color wheel and you can just spin that color wheel around to, to see how they play together. This is one of the big reasons, by the way, for the color wheel, as I described before, because the complementary colors sit exactly across from each other on that wheel. So it makes it a lot easier to see how things play together really nicely. Then there's split complementary. So this is where we start getting into three colors. The split complementary will have one color on one side and then it'll have two colors on the other side that are somewhat close together so that you've got this adjacent slash complementary feel to them. And it, it kind of shows you how, how these colors can go together nicely while also being kind of close together. Adjacent colors are colors that are close together on one side of the wheel. So you can use two or three for this. And then triadic colors are literally an isosceles triangle. So that is a triangle with equal lengths on each side that you just spin around kind of in the same way as complementary. You can't change the lengths on them because we know that these three being equal lengths, they look good together. Okay, so you can spin them around and see which color combinations work best for you on triadic. Then the last two are the four color combination ones. First is squares, so that's exactly like triadic where you've got equal links, except this time it's four colors. Okay, so you make a square, right? And then you spin that square around. Again, I really wouldn't suggest four colors unless you're an artist of some type or something like that, or unless you feel like you really, really need four colors. I would simply stick to three if you can. And then the most complex one to pull off and get looking right is tetradic. So tetradic is, you can think of two complementary color lines that crisscross, okay? So they they will never come like this and move together. They'll always be crisscrossed and they're gonna move either further apart or closer together. But getting this color combination to look right can definitely be a challenge, okay? So if you're very comfortable with colors and color theory, go for this one. If not, I would, again, go back to one of the simpler three color combination ones. So there you go, I hope that that helped you to clear up any ideas you needed to have about how to apply colors, what colors to pick, and how to make those decisions for yourself. Let me know what kind of colors you've decided to go with, why you're thinking about going with that, and what that cultural impact is, and whether you thought about that before. It is a really, really important thing to consider that I think is often overlooked. Otherwise, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I will catch you in the next one.